on here, some gadget guy, and I got a great question from uh, one of the people who saw my video review of the Nokia Lumia 1020's camera. Did a video posting some samples of some of the video that I've shot using this camera, and I've been very impressed with the output on the Lumia 1020. But he had a really interesting question uh, that I wanted to spend a little time talking about on photos. And it's Will Frame asks, well, first off, he says, very nice review, Juan. Some of the best coverage I've seen regarding the 1020's camera. Oh, you flattery. Uh, what are your thoughts about the images with respect to sharing? At sharing size on Facebook, etc., only so much detail is really visible. It seems like the 1020 would be overkill in these situations, especially since you have to do a little extra work to get the full-size images off of the phone. My only real gripe about this phone is the slow shot-to-shot -shot time. Well, Will, thank you for the question, and I wanted to spend a little time talking about um, what makes a camera good. You know, so there's been a lot of marketing put out about the Lumia 1020's 41 megapixel image sensor. And that's true to a point. It does have a really large image sensor. It's a 38 megapixel raw JPEG. Well, it's not really raw, but it's a 38 megapixel JPEG, which is saved, and then a 5 megapixel uh, picture, which is downsampled from that, which then you can use for sharing, sending, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, etc. It's it's to make sure that you can send a smaller file over uh, email or your favorite social networks, and it also won't wreck your data plan because those full size JPEG pictures are often 12 megabytes or bigger. And if you were sending those all the time, one, a lot of email clients just won't accept them, and two, you're going to wreck your data plan. So, uh, well, you're actually very accurate if all we're looking at is resolution. So with that 38 megapixel resolution being downsampled to a 5 megapixel resolution and then uploaded to Facebook where it's going to be crushed even just a little bit more, you're right. There is no advantage to having a super high resolution image sensor. Uh, that's what HTC is banking on with UltraPixel. Instead of having a bunch of pixels on the back of their camera to keep their phone super slim and to include optical image stabilization like Nokia, they are including only a 4 megapixel image sensor on their camera. So their idea is you take the picture that you want, the file size is super small, it doesn't mess up your data plan, and it's very easy to send those pictures uh, directly from the camera to your favorite social networking sites. The problem is, is with a 4 megapixel image sensor, you don't have a lot of editing capabilities and you don't have a lot of cropping capabilities. So from a technical standpoint, uh, if we're only comparing resolution to resolution, uh, if you're one of those people who likes to tweak or add filters or change colors or revert to black and white or crop in on a photo, you have a lot more capability to do that with the Lumia 1020. You have a, just a lot more information to work with when shooting the same scene with these two different style cameras. Oh, my Nokia says hello. So uh, that's that's the first sort of plus check mark for having that super large image sensor. It's not necessarily that you're going to end up with so much extra detail, it's that you have a little more information to work with before you submit the photo. Now if you are just a run and gun photographer, you pick up your phone, you push the camera button, takes a picture, you take that picture and upload it, you're not going to get the benefits of having that Lumia 1020 camera. Now, that doesn't necessarily make a camera good though. What makes a camera good is the quality of the lens elements that go in front of that image sensor. It's the glass, you know, it's, it's, it's how the image and the light hit the image sensor before it becomes a series of zeros and ones. And in that respect, the lens on the Lumia 1020 is one of the most photographic uh, pieces of technology I've ever seen on a mobile device. It's got a very pleasant quality of uh, shallow depth of field so that your subject is in very clear focus and then immediately behind your subject it starts to blur out and so it really helps isolate what you're trying to take a picture of. It's, it's an effect that we're used to seeing on the highest end point and shoot cameras and on low end SLRs with you know stock kit lenses. It's really that good. I've got a couple samples that I want to show you guys from pictures that I've taken. I need to pull them up here and hopefully and hopefully Google um, won't wig out like it did the last time I tried to show you guys pictures. So we're going to do a screen share. I'm going to go there. Okay. 
So, you know, using Picasa, this is a picture of some flowers that I took, and this is the full-size JPEG that we were looking at. And we can see right here, this is what my focal point was. This is what I wanted to take a picture of. And then just inches behind that, if we move over here to this side of the flower and zoom in, there's a startling amount of detail that we have right here but this background information, even though it's really busy, you know, this is a really busy scene. There are a lot of little pieces of information that could catch the eye and distract us from my focal point. If I were to crop right here, this would be a really interesting composition for a photo. And I took it from way back here. You know, that's pretty fantastic photographic performance for a smartphone camera. Moving on to another example, the same, the same thing here. We've got this rose in focus. I'm trying to follow my rules of thirds <laughs> and lining it up here on the side. I did Dutch the shot for some reason. I don't know why I did that. But as we zoom in, we have the ability to really hyper-isolate the rose here. And this information is a little less present. It's not going to distract us from the flower that I'm trying to take a picture of. This is blurry. The eye is not going to be drawn to that information. Another example, this sort of vine here, or this sort of tree here with some kind of fruit budding off of it. Uh, again, we can zoom in tight, and we can retain a startling amount of detail in all of these little leaf vine threads. It's, you know, really, really well captured. So these 41 megapixels are certainly doing their job, but the lens in front of those megapixels is making sure that my eye isn't distracted by all of this busyness in the background. And, you know, it's kind of a dirty scene. In California, we have really crappy power management, so our electrical wiring is hanging really low. And whenever you're walking around a neighborhood getting pictures of things, it's very common to see these electrical and uh, telephone wires all over the place. But you know what? They're a little blurred out. They're not quite as present over here so that your eye isn't thinking, oh, well, look at all that mess back there. It's focused on this right here. And you're able to crop in even a little more severely and not lose detail in that shot. Uh, one of my favorite examples is this right here. So, you know, this, this is just sort of an interesting industrial thing. You can see the paint starting to chip away from this thing. It's a wheel that you turn for some kind of gas or water service, I'm assuming. But as you zoom in, we're retaining all of the information into this metal work and the paint chipping, but the wall, which is only a couple inches behind it, which is that crappy stucco on the, uh, the side of my old apartment complex, it's, it's so soft that this pops. It leaps off the rest of the image so that you're focused on you know, again, you're focused on what I'm trying to communicate. You're focused on what I think is important as the photographer, and you're not distracted by busier elements in the background. Another important consideration for any kind of smartphone camera that you might take a look at is what the sensor's capabilities are for low-light photography. This is not an HDR photo. This is a photo off of this the, the regular, or not the regular camera app. We'll talk about that in just a second. But this is a photo off of the Nokia camera app, the smart camera app. And this is a nighttime shot with a very bright element that the camera is trying to expose for here in the middle. And then, you know, an almost completely dark rest of the scene. But we haven't lost detail at the top of this church. We can still make out all of this brickwork. And it's a little grainy, sure, but... It's it's shocking dynamic range. So, here I'm going to get out of screen share. Excellent. <laughs> the last time I tried to get out of screen share, Google had wasn't going to have it, and YouTube locked me into the picture that I was showing. So those elements actually make up all of the different factors in what makes a photo interesting and what makes a photo good, and by proxy, what makes a camera good. And all of those things will translate when you upload a photo to Facebook. Sure, it's not going to be as high a resolution, but once you've cropped in, that element of depth of field is still going to show on Instagram. It's still going to show on Facebook, and your photos are still going to be better for it on Facebook and Instagram, Twitter, Flickr, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Ditto dynamic range. So you have better capabilities for taking that photo right up front those photos are going to look better. People are going to respond more to those photos. Now, to address your concerns about the shot-to-shot -shot recycle, yeah, that's just a limitation of the hardware. Unfortunately, this generation of Windows Phone handset is locked into that dual-core processor which Microsoft has dictated all Windows phones are going to use. We're assuming that there's going to be a Lumia 1520 
Fablet coming out, hopefully by the end of this month, and that is rumored to be using a Qualcomm 800. So we're hoping that the, the photo performance and the video performance is going to be improved there. Now, on the Lumia 1020, it's inelegant that they had to do this, but Nokia does include a couple different camera apps. So if you want the full resolution, you have to put up with that slow shot-to-shot -shot recycle. It's just hard cramming a 38 megapixel image through a dual core processor and onto the flash storage built into your phone. So you just have to give it a little time to recover from that. Although you can still use the stock Windows Phone camera app if you need something a little quicker. And, and that comes with that nice ability to just sort of tap the screen, it takes the picture, you're good to go. And that will use the 5 megapixel downsampling uh, image from the camera. You don't get the full resolution, but if you need something that's fast and you need something to, that's going to recycle quickly, you can do that. There's also the Nokia Smart Camera. Let me see if I can pull that up. Oh, Smart Cam. Here, and I'll, I'll turn this around and let's see, can I get me... Good. And so the Nokia Smart Camera takes a series of pictures all in a row. And so if you need that really fast performance for, you know, uh, like a sporting event or something like that, uh, you can use that app instead, and then it'll pick what it thinks is the best shot. It always manages to pick the best shot of me with my lips in some funny mid-talking position. But that's apparently what I am like, so that's unfortunately very accurate. So there are a couple options on Windows Phone to get around that. It, again, it's not going to be as seamless as all of the different modes that you can shoot in on a Samsung camera. So it's really easy while you're in that Samsung camera app or in the HTC camera app just to make a couple adjustments and you're still in the same app to take those photos. On Windows Phone, you have to jump out of the Pro camera app if you want some of these other features, but they are there and they are solutions that are pretty compelling and work fairly well. Um, so I hope that has answered your question, uh, Will. I, I, I really do feel that there are benefits beyond just that 41 megapixel image sensor, and Nokia has done a phenomenal job of uh, improving smartphone photography over these last two generations of Windows phones, and it's really a shame that people haven't really been communicating that message as honestly as I feel they should. Uh, this is another opportunity for me to point out um, how awful the CNET review of the Lumia 1020 is uh, from Ms. Molly Wood. Um, she, uh, her, her review is, is lazy, and there's a lot of misinformation in the review. And I'm not going to link in the, in the notes to this video to that review, but I will post a link to the wonderful rebuttal by Windows Phone Central addressing all of her concerns regarding the Windows Phone platform as a photographic tool for people who like mobile photography on the backs of their smartphones. So, um, I just want to show a couple more. Uh, it, it, for those of you who are done with answering the question, you guys can, can jet. Uh, there were just a couple more uh, photos that I wanted to show off because I'm narcissistic like that, and I have fun showing people my photography. So, we're, we're looking at that church. This, this one, I took a picture of a sunset, and I'm just amazed at the quality and level of detail that this camera is able to retain, even in shockingly dynamic... Uh, exposure values. So, you know, like the, this, this ground is all completely uh, underexposed so that I can get good images of the clouds. But when we zoom in, we can still see stripes information on this flag uh, way beyond even just a 100% crop. At, even at 150, this is still usable silhouetted detail with light coming through. And the camera managed to pick up all of that information wonderfully. Again, if I do a crop in like right here, you know, that's a that's a perfectly viable Facebook photo to put up online for to to share with people, and they're still going to see the effects of a wonderful camera sensor combined with a fantastic camera lens. And same thing here, we've got a lot of cropping ability. If I want to come in and can kind of see all these people out on the grass, I can isolate just this little museum right here from when uh, I took a recent trip to Boston or I can uh, zoom all the way back out and give people the entire scene of this uh, memorial here. Uh, I used this one recently for a review. So I took the, took the picture and then realized, you know, like, oh, I don't want all of this mess in the background. I really just want this isolated right here so that people can see a close-up of what an HDMI cable looks like. And so in cropping, 
I think I ended up with something this severe. And again, all of this foam from my mic screen is completely blurred out. And it has these nice little sort of depth of field, light reflective uh, bokeh balls. Um, this is all very, very clear. And even coming into a 100% crop in indoor low lighting, this is still a usable representation of what I was trying to use for my article for, uh, I think I was talking about the Chromecast at the time. And then I'm a sucker for flower photography. It's sort of my passion hobby so that whenever I'm not in my studio or writing up uh, tech uh, reports, I can go outside and actually smell the flowers. And moving in, you can do some really wonderful things with photos from the Lumia 1020. All of the soft, fuzzy texture on all of these tiny little flowers. Each of these flowers in real life is about a quarter the size of my pinky nail and we can do super macro work by utilizing the crop zoom on the Nokia Lumia 1020. Uh, it, it's really a, a, a wonderful way to sort of experience mobile photography. Yeah, let me get out of screen share. So, Will, thanks for your question. I hope I was able to answer it. And uh, everyone who checked out this video, thank you so much for watching. If you have questions or topics that you'd like me to address uh, about our technology and the smartphones and tablets that we're using, drop me comments on my videos. Uh, send me personal messages. Reach out to me on Twitter, at SomeGadgetGuy. I'm also on Google Plus as Juan Carlos Bagnell, which is my real name. So that's a thing. And uh, as always, folks, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you all on the next video.